Well, this is the Intellect 4, well, MCS 4. This is the Intel development system for developing software and hardware based on the first Intel microprocessor, the 4004, 4004. Uh, they didn't want people turning it on if they didn't have a key, so you see the on-off switch is actually a key. Here's a place to program uh, EEPROMs. Well, here's the back side of the MCS4. A lot of room for expansion. There are two uh, multi-pin cables brought out for a serial communication, a printer, and probably a teletype uh, input. Well, here we've opened up the top cover, but what, what I want you to see here is that someone has put some instructions inside the cover. And these instructions basically are how to turn the computer on, the sequence of turning it on, a little schematic diagram up there at the top, how to hook it up to a teletype, and how to get it to run. Well, looking inside the MCS4, we see over here to the left, there's a power supply, <clears throat> and then one over to the right, and uh, some interconnected cables from this I.O. card, input output card, back here to the back connector, cables connecting to the front panel. Here are the two front panel cards. 15 card slots in here to put cards in. Since microcomputers really hadn't been built at this time, this is just the start of the Intel 4004, the design of this is based a lot on how a mini computer would be built with the cage ra uh, card rack and so forth in. Here's the read-write random access memory card for the Intellect 4. You see the four rows of eight chips each. Each one of those chips contains 1,000 bits, and then one row of eight would be one kilobyte, and there's four rows there, so that's 4,000 bytes. That's about a million times less than our current personal uh, laptop computers, which typically have four megabytes of uh, read-write memory, so this would be a million times less uh, read-write memory in this computer, which was made in 1972, and here are the chips, a 2102 chip, and the nomenclature of the card over here to the right. Well, here's the CPU card, which also has some EEPROM memory, and let's take a look first. Here's the uh, Intel processor, the 4004. Up here is one kilobyte of the very first EEPROM memory, electronically programmable read-only memory. These are 1702A chips, each one containing 256 8-bit words. So those four chips contain 1,000 words of 8-bit memory. A few other interesting things about this uh, computer. If you were to count the number of pins on the connector down here, you'd find there's 100 pins, 50 on each side. That's a 100-pin bus. This card controls the PROM programmer, which you see over to the right, the little socket there on the front of the Intellect 4, you plug your EEPROM in to program it. This is actually the controller card in the computer. It also controls the uh, teletype input-output. Here you see this card, 1973. EEPROM programmer card with a lot of discrete logic on it. Well, we've reassembled the uh, Intellect 4. We just want to tell you we've got the full set of manuals uh, with this computer. They're quite extensive that Intel provided. But another little story I want to tell you, when I was teaching at the University of Virginia Tech in the early 90s, I received a phone call from a research company gathering things for a trial and some litigation. And they said, well, do you happen to have an Intellect 4 or MCS 4 in your collection? I said, well, yes, I do. I have one right here in my office, as a matter of fact. And they said, well, wonderful. We can't find one. Even in the archives of Intel, they're just none around. Could we borrow it? So they borrowed it for about 18 months. And the, the uh, idea of was that uh, they were having a patent uh, case, litigation case, between Texas Instrument and Intel. This is my understanding on it. This is not uh, necessarily fully factual, but my understanding they were having a patent case between Intel and TI. Texas Instrument actually had built a microprocessor chip earlier than the Intel 4004, but it never worked, and they had to prove that. So I think the end result was that uh, the microprocessor of the 4004 was considered to be the first and probably uh, resulted in a patent for 
for Intel because it did work. So that was a very good use of our collection. We've been collecting for over 40 years and have a wonderful collection and we're just delighted to have some of these early development systems in our collection. Hello, this is David Larson, member of the LCF group. Thank you for watching our little video.